Good afternoon and welcome. So we're joined today by the Honorable Jean-Yves Duclos, Canada's Minister of Health, and the Honorable Caroline Bennett, Minister of Mental Health and Addictions and Associate Minister of Health. We'll start with short remarks from Minister Duclos. Le Ministre Duclos fera une brève allocution. Nous donnerons ensuite la parole aux médias pour poser leurs questions. Sans plus tarder, M. Duclos, à vous. Bonjour tout le monde. Good afternoon, everyone. La première rencontre en personne des ministres de la Santé est maintenant terminée. Et malheureusement, nous devons admettre que nous n'avons pas réalisé tous les progrès espérés. We came here in good faith, hoping to build on the unprecedented level of collaboration between federal, provincial and territorial governments we have seen through the pandemic. Starting in February 2020 and in the months leading to this meeting, at the initiative of our colleagues from provinces and territories, our officials have worked diligently and collaboratively on two very important initiatives that we were genuinely hoping to announce an action plan today for at the first in-person health ministers meeting since 2018. That is a pan-Canadian action plan to address health workforce challenges and to support health workers and be the pan-Canadian health data strategy to improve the quality and the safety of care to all Canadians. However, before the meeting was even over, before our discussions on these two essential items were even concluded, the premiers released a statement calling the meeting a failure. That is not exactly what we would call meaningful engagement at this meeting. Unfortunately, despite yesterday's gesture of good faith, provincial and ter territorial colleagues, our colleagues, have received marching orders by their premiers not to make further progress. As a result, the premiers are preventing all of us health ministers from taking concrete and tangible steps that would make an immediate difference in the daily life of health workers and patients. Obviously, this is disappointing. Canadians expect and deserve more than this. Canadians expect and deserve us to be grounded in the real needs of our communities, our healthcare workers and patients. As we all know, the, public, the publicly funded universal healthcare system we all cherish as Canadians is at an important crossroads. The pandemic has shown us what we can achieve when we work together. It has shown us that there is a different way to do things. Instead of allowing our health minister colleagues to do their work and engage in a constructive and meaningful conversation about the future of healthcare in this country, premiers are forcing my colleagues to speak only of one thing and one thing only, money. All that premiers keep saying is that they want an unconditional increase in the Canada health transfer sent to their finance ministers. That is not a plan. That is the old way of doing things. If there was anyone still doubting it, the current crisis is the undeniable proof that the old way doesn't work. We need to do things differently. We need to allow health ministers do their work. We need to work together on the fundamental changes that are required to ensure the long-term survival of Canada's universal and publicly funded health care system. We need to work together so that health workers can do their jobs without sacrificing their own health and safety in the process. We need to work together so that patients everywhere in Canada can get the care they need, when they need it, and where they need it. These are fundamental priorities that we all agree upon. Why in the world won't premiers let us health ministers work on these priorities? These common priorities are based on the principles at the heart of the Canada Health Act. The act that legally guarantees the existence of our publicly funded universal health care system and defines my role as federal health minister. These are the basics we need to go back to. 
premiers keep insisting on money in the first minister's meeting. Once again, I will be very clear. Before we start talking about the means, we need to talk about the ends. And that can only happen and continue to happen at the health minister's table, and premiers need to let that happen. Merci. Je vais maintenant répéter en français. La première rencontre en personne des ministres de la Santé est maintenant terminée et malheureusement, nous devons admettre que nous n'avons pas réalisé tous les progrès espérés. Nous sommes tous et toutes venus ici de bonne foi en espérant tirer parti du niveau sans précédent de collaboration entre les gouvernements fédéral, provinciaux et territoriaux que nous avons vus et connus tout au long de la pandémie. À partir de février 2022, Et dans les mois qui ont précédé cette réunion, à l'initiative de nos collègues des provinces et des territoires, nos fonctionnaires ont travaillé avec diligence et en collaboration sur deux initiatives très importantes que nous espérions vraiment, vraiment annoncer et mettre en action dès aujourd'hui, loin lors de la première réunion des ministres de la Santé en personne depuis 2018, soit un plan d'action pan-canadien visant à relever les défis en matière de main dœuvre et à soutenir les travailleurs de la santé partout au pays, et deux, une stratégie pan-canadienne relative aux données sur la santé pour améliorer la qualité et la sécurité des soins offerts à tous les Canadiens. Avant la fin de la réunion et avant même que les discussions sur ces deux points essentiels ne soient terminées, les premiers ministres des provinces ont publié une déclaration qualifiant la réunion d'échec. Ce n'est pas exactement ce que nous appellerions un engagement significatif. Malheureusement, malgré le geste d'ouverture posé hier, les collègues ministres provinciaux et territoriaux ont reçu l'ordre de leur premier ministre de ne pas faire de progrès additionnel. Par conséquent, Les premiers ministres nous ont empêchés de prendre des mesures concrètes et tangibles qui feraient et feront une différence immédiate dans la vie quotidienne des travailleurs de la santé et des patients. C'est évidemment décevant. Les Canadiens attendent et méritent plus que cela. Les Canadiens attendent et méritent que nous soyons ancrés dans les besoins réels de nos communautés, de nos travailleurs de la santé et des patients. Comme nous savons toutes et tous, Le système de soins de santé universel est financé par les gouvernements que nous chérissons au Canada, au Canada en tant que Canadiens se trouve à un carrefour important. La pandémie nous a montré ce que nous pouvons accomplir lorsque nous travaillons ensemble. Elle nous a montré qu'il y a une autre façon de faire les choses. Toutefois, au lieu de permettre à mes collègues ministres de la Santé de faire leur travail et de s'engager dans une conversation constructive et significative sur l'avenir des soins de santé au pays, les premiers ministres provinciaux forcent mes collègues à ne parler qu'une seule, que d'une seule et même chose, l'argent. Tout ce que les premiers ministres provinciaux ne cessent de dire, c'est qu'ils veulent une augmentation inconditionnelle du transfert canadien en, manti- en matière de santé et que ce soit envoyé à leur ministre des Finances. Ce n'est pas un plan. C'est l'ancienne façon de faire les choses. Si quelqu'un en doutait encore, La crise actuelle est la preuve indéniable que l'ancienne façon de faire ne fonctionne pas. Nous devons faire les choses différemment. Nous devons laisser les ministres de la Santé du pays faire leur travail. Nous devons travailler ensemble sur les changements fondamentaux qui sont nécessaires pour assurer la survie à long terme du système de santé universel et public du Canada. Nous devons travailler ensemble pour que les travailleurs de la santé puissent aussi faire leur travail sans sacrifier leur propre santé et sécurité dans le processus. Nous devons travailler ensemble pour que les patients partout au Canada puissent obtenir les soins dont ils ont besoin, quand ils en ont besoin et où ils en ont besoin. Ce sont là des priorités fondamentales sur lesquelles nous sommes tous et toutes d'accord. Pourquoi les premiers ministres des provinces Ne nous, ne nous laisse-t-il donc pas travailler sur ces propriétés, ces priorités, pardon, nous, les ministres de la Santé? Ces priorités communes sont fondées sur les principes qui sont au cœur de la loi canadienne sur la santé, la loi qui garantit l'existence de notre système de soins de santé universel et financé par l'État, 
et qui définit mon rôle comme ministre fédéral de la Santé. Ce sont les principes de base auxquels nous devons revenir. Les premiers ministres provinciaux continuent d'insister sur l'argent et sur une réunion des premiers ministres. Une fois encore, je serai très clair. Avant de commencer à parler des moyens, nous devons parler des fins. Et cela ne peut se produire et continuer à se produire qu'à la table des ministres de la Santé. Merci. Merci. Donc, nous allons maintenant procéder à la période de questions, en débutant avec les questions dans la salle. Veuillez-vous nommer et nommer votre média. Une question, une sous-question, s'il vous plaît. We will now proceed with questions from media in the room. Please state your name and your outlet. One question, one follow-up. Uh, Richard Zussman, Global BC. You described the premiers here of coming um, not in good faith in sending out that uh, advisory while you were still meeting. What impact do you believe that type of behavior will have on those working uh, in the system and patients in terms of not being able to come to some sort of deal here? Thank you. Let me be very clear. My relationship, our relationship with our colleagues, health, health ministers in Canada is exceptional. We have worked really well over the pandemic and we have saved together hundreds of thousands of lives. And we all want to continue doing that because we all share the same goal, which is to serve the same people with the same dollars, with the same objectives. Now, this being said, we need to be able to do our job and we are prepared to do our job. We have spent months uh, in the last year preparing for today's meeting with a, a plan to support health workers. They are going through a crisis. They need our help. We have also a plan which we've been building for the last few months with the leadership and partnership of important health ministers, including Minister Dix in this province, who's done really well in building those two plans in collaboration with many other health ministers. The problem is that until no, the, the great thing, the great news that, that until very recently, all of that was going to be announced today and, and implemented thereafter. But a few days ago, my colleagues, health ministers, received marching orders from the premiers to stop making progress on things that can make a meaningful, immediate impact on the lives of millions of health workers and patients across Canada. That is wrong. We need to let health ministers continue to make the progress that is so important to Canadians based on the immense benefits that this progress and collaboration has generated in the last uh, months with COVID-19. Uh, there is a massive shortage in this country of children's painkillers. Uh, what are you doing at the federal level to ensure that parents and their children have access uh, to these sort of uh, medications? And this is indeed a serious concern. We have also talked about this uh, at the meeting. Uh, analgesics for children uh, are key to keeping, obviously, children uh, free of pain and uh, to reduce their fever and avoid uh, bringing these children to the emergency department. So this is obviously essential to looking after the safety and the health of our children. And that's why we were talking about this precisely today. And that's why at the federal level, all options are open. We know that this is driven by a great increase in demand for analgesics over the last few months uh, during the summertime. Uh, unlike what uh, we would be expecting in normal times, uh, the demand for analgesics has soared. We now understand really well that this is driven by the severe viruses that are impacting our children across Canada. Our pediatric hospitals are overwhelmed. So obviously, this has led to an important uh, increase in the demand. Fortunately, the supply has also increased very rapidly, but not yet enough to replenish the stocks that are going to be needed in the next weeks and months. The good news is that all, all partners, uh, producers, uh, distributors, uh, the pharmacists, the, the pediatricians, the hospitals, the provincial and territorial ministers, they're all working together with the partnership and leadership of Health Canada, who is meeting them almost who is meeting them all every day to make sure that access uh, to children, and in particular access to those children that need the most, uh, those analgesics is, uh, is secured in the short and the longer term. Justine Hunter from the Globe and Mail. I'm just wondering if the ministers in the room brought up any specific objections to the two action plans that were on the agenda for today. There were no specific objections. 
until, until just a few days ago, we were so pleased that we would come to this meeting and announce a plan that would involve everyone's efforts to support health workers. Health workers are going through a big crisis in Canada. Nurses in particular are tired, they're, they're sick, they are leaving in large numbers. They fear for their personal safety and their mental health when they go to work. So we have had, over the last few months, enormous success with the contribution of our officials in building that plan in particular. But just a few days ago, they received marching orders from their premiers to stop. Now, please stop, don't do anything. We don't want that to happen. That's very unfortunate. Now, fortunately, we know what our priorities are. We all agree on the priorities. You know, retaining health workers, that's the key priority. Recruiting them and recognizing their credentials if they were trained in other provinces and territories or internationally. Making sure they have the support, the mental health support, the physical support, and the safety protection to do what they are there to do, which is to exert their passion and their compassion. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen the same way we were expecting it would happen today. But the good news is, again, that we all agree on the priorities. If the premiers didn't impose marching orders on uh, my colleagues, health ministers, we would all, we'd all be together today and recognize the plan and the work ahead. Did you have the authority to come in and actually table money, like a specific dollar or a ballpark of any kind of indication of how much money you're prepared to bring to Canada health transfers? And are you still willing to pursue side deals with the provinces if they're willing? We, we have promised, and the Prime Minister repeated that again today, I think, and yesterday, certainly. We have promised there will be more dollars and more resources. And I mentioned yesterday that we were uh, willing to increase the Canada health transfer so long as it would come with real uh, impacts for Canadians, in particular with, for, with the ability for Canadians to have access, greater access to their electronic medical records, to make sure that the information that uh, healthcare providers use, that information is shared uh, more efficiently and more safely across pharmacists, across physicians, uh, specialist physicians, uh, lab technicians, so that we reduce the level of waste that there is currently in the system that has an impact on the quality and the safety of care that people can receive. No, we, we said that yesterday. In addition to that, we announced yesterday that there will be and there would be a fund you know, to support the priorities of our colleagues' health ministers. We all agree on the priorities. Now, it's both, mostly around health workers, around increasing access to family doctors, increasing access to proper, timely uh, mental health services, and as I said, using data in a modern world to support the health uh, of, and, and the safety of Canadians. So we all agree on those priorities. There will be more resources, but before we end up with the means necessary to achieve those outcomes, we first need to speak openly as we should be doing today, about what those outcomes should be. Hi, Camille Baines with the Canadian Press. I'd like to know, at the end of the day, there's no deal. Uh, Canadians have seen the premiers come here, the first ministers come here, patients are frustrated, providers are frustrated. What's your message to them in terms of what happens next in whatever money might be going to provinces or not, and territories? I am, well, the reason I am optimistic is that Minister Bennett and I have been spending the last year and a half with health ministers. Health ministers in provinces and territories have a hard job to do. It's a difficult job. But they want to do that job. And the good news is that they will receive our support. We are their allies. We are allies to the health ministers who, with nurses and, and personal service workers and physicians, want to work together with our support. So the, and I'm, de I'm therefore optimistic we'll do the work that Canadians expect us to do. But we need to stop premiers from stopping us to do that work. Now, that's, that's unacceptable, inexcusable in the current circumstances in which Canadians expect us to serve patients and to support workers better than we currently do. Still not sure whether you came with an offer of money and outside of the Canada Health Transfer, whether there was talk about any bilateral agreements? Well, I made that quite specific yesterday. Now, there will be targeted funding 
to the priorities that province and territories have been expressing, my health colleagues have been expressing for many months now. We've had a total of 11 virtual meetings over the last year, plus this one in person. We all agree on the priorities. So there will be funding to support those priorities. But we need to be all together and express commonly those priorities to then move to the next step. The next step, which is going to be to determine the type of funding and the agenda that we want to work collaboratively on. Bonjour, Monsieur Duclos, Christian Noël de Radio Canada. Uh, vos collègues ministres de la Santé des provinces, c'est quand même pas des pions. Pourquoi vous blâmez les premiers ministres? Parce que c'est eux qui ont sorti ce matin hein, pour dire que la conférence allait être un échec. Alors qu'on était en train de parler des, des résultats et des priorités qu'on voulait euh, partager avec les, euh, avec, les, avec les Canadiens. Alors, en, pendant qu'on est en train de faire notre travail, on nous dit qu'on ne doit pas le faire parce que ça va être un échec. Et en plus, ce n'est pas un secret de polichinelle, il y a quelques jours, tous mes collègues euh, ministres de la Santé se sont fait dire par leur premier ministre qu'ils devaient arrêter tout progrès sur les enjeux de résultats pour les travailleurs, pour les patients, comment on fait pour utiliser les données de manière plus efficace, plus sécuritaire, plus que les, pour que les gens puissent avoir, à des soins, avoir accès à des soins de santé mieux adaptés au moment où ils en ont besoin, éviter d'attendre euh, quelques jours euh, que, que des tests nous arrivent parce que tout ça se promène par des papiers, par des fax, ne pas être certain que notre dossier personnel euh, soit, soit, soit accessible à soi-même et accessible aussi à un autre médecin qui a besoin de connaître notre état de santé pour bien nous traiter. Donc, ce sont des choses fondamentales sur lesquelles tous les ministres, et en particulier le ministre Dubé, s'entendent. Le ministre Dubé, au Québec, il veut aller de l'avant. Il a un très bon plan, puis on a envie de l'appuyer. Mais il faut qu'on puisse avoir l'occasion et les moments comme aujourd'hui pour pouvoir en parler, puis communiquer aux gens, y compris aux Québécois, les résultats qu'on qu souhaite atteindre ensemble. Il ne faut pas se faire dire par les premiers ministres d'arrêter de travailler dans un contexte aussi critique que celui qu'on qu vit présentement. En même temps, le nœud de la guerre en santé, c'est l'argent. Et ce que le fédéral a dans tout ça, c'est de l'argent. Vous êtes arrivé à la table sans argent. C'est quoi votre part de responsabilité sur l'échec aujourd'hui? Bien, la part de la responsabilité est partagée. On a la même responsabilité, en fait, pour être plus clair encore, la responsabilité est commune. C'est de, 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 de s'occuper, de prendre soin des mêmes travailleurs et des mêmes patients à travers le pays. Nos rôles sont différents. Évidemment, le rôle le plus exigeant, c'est le rôle d'un ministre de la Santé d'une province et d'un territoire, parce que c'est lui ou elle qui a besoin de gérer les crises dans les urgences, les problèmes de, de disponibilité de main-d'oeuvre et, et, et toutes les, tous les tracas qui vont avec la gestion d'un système de santé. Mais le rôle d'une fédération et d'un ministre de la Santé, c'est de prendre connaissance des priorités communes, et ça, ces priorités communes sont maintenant communes et connues depuis un bon bout de temps, et de pouvoir amener les gens à travailler davantage ensemble. Et je prends l'exemple des, euh, des données, l'accès à des données plus fiables euh, et plus rapides. C'est un agenda sur lequel on travaille déjà très bien ensemble, ce qui fait en sorte que partout au Canada, y compris au Québec, l'accès à son dossier électronique est plus facile et plus rapide, que les échanges entre les fournisseurs de soins sont, 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 plus, euh, sont plus solides. Mais il faut aller plus loin que ça. Mais pour aller plus loin que ça, il faut arrêter de se faire dire par les premiers ministres à des provinces qu'on ne peut pas euh, y arriver et qu'on doit, euh, qu doit essentiellement ne pas faire notre travail. Bonjour. Good afternoon. Moira Whiten with the TAI. Um, we've seen staffing as a real major theme of this week's conference. Unions and migrant rights organizations in BC are currently protesting the imminent deportation of a hospital housekeeper and her family back to Mexico. Mr. Duclos, have you discussed this matter today or with your counterpart responsible for immigration? And does it make sense to deport healthcare workers in the middle of a staffing crisis? That's a, a fair and good question. I would uh, want to um to defer to Minister Dix, who is uh, an outstanding health minister, and to see how we can work with him to address that particular circumstance. Okay, but you, you have not discussed it with your federal counterpart responsible for immigration. Well, I, I, what I'm saying is that to, to have the wholesome and appropriate and correct answer that you deserve, Minister Dix would need to be in, in, in this room to, uh, to, to speak properly. 
Thank you. If I may a follow up um, for both ministers, uh, a number of Section 56 exemption requests have come in from BC in recent years. Um, a number of them declined or left without a response for over one year or close to. Um, can you speak to Health Canada's reasoning around um, why the request specifically from the Drug User Liberation Front was declined and whether the Victoria Cannabis Compassion Club's uh, request is still being seriously considered? Thank you for the question, and uh, I think I've answered the question about Delph before. Um, I, as you know, in their in their request, um, they would be sourcing um, the drugs um, from the dark web. Um, I I am committed to ending uh, to, for us to have in Canada a far, pharmaceutical grade um, options for the people to have medically assisted therapy in in everything they need. And that includes working with Dr. Sutherland on the powdered fentanyl, from the, the what is happening with pharma science, with the injectable diacetyl morphine, the Dilaudid. We are, we are working to get that full spectrum of drugs so that people uh, are not going to the street for their drugs and dying. Hi, uh, Mike Crawley from CBC. Uh, Minister Duclos, um, I posed this question to uh, Minister Dix, so it's only fair that I pose it to you as well. It takes two sides to reach an agreement. It also can take two sides for an agreement to fall apart. What responsibility do you take, or does the federal government take, that there was nothing accomplished in this meeting, that, that the meeting fell apart? I think, uh, and I, I believe all my colleagues would agree, I think we have done our job. Health ministers, we have done our job over the last year. We have prepared both of those plans, the plan to support health workers and the plan, the plan to use data in a modern manner to improve the quality and safety of care across Canada. So we have done our job. I don't think we can be blamed, uh, our health ministers, for having done what we said we would do. The problem is that my colleagues were asked to stop doing their job by their their premiers. So I believe the blame is not among us. I think the blame is elsewhere, and it will have to be acknowledged by whoever is involved. Okay, I'm told there's no more questions on Zoom, so this concludes today's event. Merci. <laughs>